Hi, everybody. My name is Jason. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very much for joining us. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your um, everything. And we extend our little tiny three-foot table over to you guys. And now we're going to put a couple of leafs in our table, as they say. Um, and for those who don't know what a leaf in the table is... Um, it's like an extender. It's an extender, yeah. And this is not this is a glass table, so it's not really... There's no leafs in it. But if you guys can visualize us putting leafs in it and you guys sitting right down next to us, I would appreciate that. And we enjoy your guys' company. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Everyone all right? Yeah. Yep. All right, so you guys all ate a bowl of bad fruit this morning? It was a little fermented, yeah. Fermented, and we can't waste anything in this house, so uh, how was it? Um, it's definitely on the edge of fermentation. It, it wasn't, like, bad. It was just, like, there were some bits that were fermented. Eli, how was it, buddy? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Eli had the toughest time going through that, but we can't waste anything in this house, and so if something goes bad, we still got to eat it, and so here we are. <clears throat> All right, so prior to this, I want to go over a couple of things that we had some subs talk about. Um, not even subs, friends, family. Um, I, that word subs is just kind of demoralizing. So people that uh, are our family that have commented on this. So Seek the Father said, this is, is uh, there is leprosy now. It's called Hansen's disease. It's around the world mild at the moment, but who knows soon? But who knows soon? Um, it could be, you know, so... Uh, we, I don't know if that is true, but I am taking their word for it. And so um, another uh, brother of ours, Frank, says this. Shalom, brothers and sisters. The Torah Parsha you are looking into today concerning the plague of leprosy is called Tzara'at. Today it is said that it was a form of leprosy when in fact not all of the cases were and was actually a spiritual disease that no doctor could cure. A Hafta'ra teaching called Tazara Metzora which are two Torah portions that are brought together because they both proclaim Yah's laws, which speak of what is cling and what is not cling. In the Hebrew language, tahor is the word that addresses purity and cleanliness, such as child birthing and animals. Well, terma is Yah's word that speaks of impure and uncling, of impure and uncling, which can be the words we speak. And this is why Abba commands us in the power of our words. We are strictly commanded not to commit lasharan ha, lashan hara. We've heard this before, right? Mm -hmm. Evil speak, right? We encounter this affliction many times in the Torah throughout Abba's Nebian. Yaz speaks of a curse of plagues or plague that would come upon an individual that was gossiping or talking harshly behind someone's back or to their face. That's what happened to Miriam. Miriam, right. And this is what he goes on and says that. We can read in Yahuwah's word, Bimidar, Numbers, chapter 12. And when the Yisraelites were in the wilderness, Aaron and Miriam, Moshe's sister and brother, had spoken against Moshe because of the Cushite wife whom he had taken. And they said, has Yahuwah spoken only through Moshe? Has, has he not also spoken through us? And Yahuwah heard it. All right. So those are two interesting things. And I appreciate your guys' comments on this. And um, let's... Let's take a quick little bus ride and see if any one of you guys are able to give me the 10, first 10 commandments. Who wants to give this a shot? Representing Boss Clan. I thought we should rock, paper, scissors. So who draws a short straw? <laughs> rock, rock, paper, scissors. All right. Who, um, who's giving a run? All right. Go again, I guess. Oh, you failed a couple I times. I thought I failed it all the time, but I don't have any other volunteers. All right. Let's do it. Commandment be, one. Be fruitful. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Please stop clapping and hitting the table. You're shaking it like a little earthquake frame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, multiply. I'll make the sound effects. You don't do the clapping. How's be, be fruitful, multiply, okay, replenish two. the earth. Yep, three. You got it. Have dominion and subdue it. That's it. Congratulations. Next. Okay. That's now to five. Every herb with seed in it is fruit for you. Herb bearing every tree is for food. I'll take that. Yep, yep, That's yep. Five. That's five. Number six. Um, men and women should join to make a family. That's it. You got it, buddy. All right, seven. Something very important. Uh, master sin. Got it. Good job, buddy. You're we're on a roll here. Let's do it. Eight. Uh, hold on. Oh, let's either remember John's name forever. Don't eat the blood. Oh, I know what this one is. Oh, wait, hold on. Am I wrong? Oh, uh, we might need to phone a friend. I think you need I, to phone well, a friend, I, too? I, I, no, 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 I'm not 100% sure. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Come on. Uh, Give me three seconds. Three, two. Don't eat the blood. 
Every cling moving thing that uh, lives shall be food for you. Uh, Nine, don't eat the blood. Ten, walk before me and be it's perfect. It's because we put those two commandments together now in order. And yeah. I kind of throw everybody under the bus because we don't practice I was practice better than last this. time. I it was, was better. There. Yeah, and I guess if you guys actually studied this, this would be good. I gotta, I gotta like look yeah. over it. All yeah. right, so we're going to break out our handy dandy split screen and we are going to begin here. Uh, gentlemen, how are you besides eating the bad fruit? Okay. Well, I mean, it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't that. It's been fine. It's been great. It looks on Eli's face. It looks like it was really bad. Yeah, I don't know. He's just. I don't know. He's just uh, a little, little, finicky, dra- finicky. Little, little dramatic towards little, the fruit. It wasn't that bad. Little dramatic. Okay. All right. So here we are. Um, before we begin, give me something different than what you guys have given me before. Give me a blessing or a. Love of something that Yah has created that blesses you, that you're happy, that and why. Um, here's mine. So the other day I was walking, I was walking, um, and I put something under my armpit, and I walked with it, and I had something in my hands, and I was able to function and walk around like. And we remember when we have moved stuff before, and. Uh, you guys have things under both armpits. You have things in both hands. We put something around your head, right? Like you'll carry a hose or something of the sort. I find it very amazing that the entire body is able, the, the, the functions that we are able to do is amazing. If right. you try to get a robot to, I mean, and now they do actually have robots that are coming up to snuff with the way humans can work, but we are fundamentally functional, like very functional. We are extremely robust. Um, I have most of my fingers back. I have like one finger right now. I just is, is kind of bad. My thumb is all back. So it, we were, I was able to get chewed up, not up by the dogs and come back. And I'm still functional enough that I, you know, we have all of these amazing parts of our body that we can do just amazing things. Just simply standing up out of bed and being able to not tip over and fall all the time or something of that sort. Our bodies are created in such a fashion. We are extremely unique creatures, right? Amazing creatures. And so I, I value and I thank Yah for his amazing designs, not just around us, but in everything that he has done, there is a, not just a perfection, but there is a masterpiece beyond perfection to everything he has designed. All right, next. Unrotten fruit. Unrotten fruit? Yep. Boo. Okay, what about it? Um, it's good. It's not rotten fruit. <laughs> so you're happy about non-rotten fruit? Yep. And that's the best you got? Oh, well, that's one of the blessings. All right, well, oh, give, me some, oh, give, okay, so give me something good, something amazing. Fruit in general, it comes with all seeds, you can replant and have, like, infinite, basically. Yeah, uh, that, is, that is good. Yeah, seeds. Um, even just the grass outside, the, the way Yah has created his environment is, it's amazing. You know, how, how could you think it? You know, a tree works a lot Kind of like how humans work. I mean, there's seeds, they drop off, they grow new trees, um, and it's almost infinite. If you have the right kind of soil, you can grow just about anything. All right, thanks, Eli. Next. I'm glad for six days of work. Ah, six days of work. You enjoy that rest day, don't you? Yes, but in the six days of work, there's so much to do in a week, so we have six days to accomplish it. Yeah, well, those Christians are hardcore. They just go seven They I go seven, they seven on seven. I mean, my respect to them, man. They yeah. really run it. Yeah, they do, and, and you can you can tell, too. All right, Cade, what do you got? Uh, the ability to uh, learn, the ability to have the knowledge of how to fix your mistakes from the past. Yeah, you know, it's we are built in a way that our brain, we're, we're understanding, right? So... This is this is something crazy. The other day, right? So it, I, this is why our our brains and we can function and stuff. Our creator has created us in such a fashion that we could figure things out, right? Just simple little things. If we did not have that understanding of of how to be kind of clever or how to be, we'd just be robots. Not only are we free thinking and we understand things, we can learn. We can we can learn, we can adapt, and we can grow. And I guess we were the creatures that Yah created were adapting. We can adapt to anything, right? You stick us in cold, we we can get fires and we can put stuff on and you stick us in heat, we can, you know, uh get fans on. I mean we are extremely versatile individuals and creatures. And when Yah created human beings, it is probably I don't know if it's one of his greatest, but it is a great creation. All right. Nicole, you got anything? She's back there. She's quiet. She's doing a little mouse thing today. All right. That's a no. All right. So Leviticus 14. Let's dive into this and see what we can figure out. All right. Uh, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp 
And the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed, cleansed two birds alive and cling and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. Okay, so this very first thing, we have something we have never seen before. What do, what do we have? Uh, it's what happens when you clean yourself. Yeah, but something, something in this we have not seen. Ingredients of cleaning? Cedar wood. I haven't seen cedar wood before. I haven't seen that we are like a, sp a specific kind of wood that we have right here, right? So we have cedar wood. I thought that was interesting. All right. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. What is an earthen vessel, folks? It's like a pot, a clay pot, I believe. Yeah, clay pot. And the it's called in in Ezra. It's called mold, M O U L D, and um, oh, it's like clay. Molded, it's yeah. clay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yah says the earth is infinite, full of mold, um, but it doesn't have much gold dust. And he's like, you know, what is what is more. Um, what do you crave more? The stuff that's like hard to get or the stuff that's, that's fully out there. So it's in an earthen vessel. Um, why is it, why would we put it in an earthen vessel? What's going to happen? I don't know why you kill, kill, kill a bird and put them in running water under a uh, Probably pot. because you like break their, because when a blood touches you, break it. So maybe it's like you're clean, you like you break why, the vessel. Why wouldn't they take like a, a brass pot or something where they didn't have to break this? Uh, maybe to signify he's clean. I don't know. Some I don't know. This is this is pretty. This is a pretty interesting chapter. All right, let's go head on. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water, and he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy. Seven times. Ah, that seven number. Cycles of seven. And shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water, that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp, and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. Now it doesn't say what they did with that, that, that pot, the molded pot. What would they have done with this? Bro, so had a break, his blood got into him. Yeah, blood. It so we know because other Torah commands that we would not keep that a clay pot with that had blood in it. All right, nine. Okay, and here we are. Cycles of seven. It never ends. Sevens and fifties. Sevens and fifties. Sevens and fifties. Our Creator is not a creator of. He he has a you know a reason for everything. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair, he shall shave off. And he shall wash his clothes. Also, he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. Okay, hold on here. What what just happened? So basically he... What happened prior to this? He became clean. They had their little... Uh, they had their... He, uh, he became clean, but they let him go. So basically he, he worked outside... He worked outside of the camp, yeah, right? You know, he, he could come into the camp, but he could not go back into his tent right. for and seven days. Right. For seven days, he was working outside of his tent. And then on that seventh day, um, he, was supposed he to shaved off all his hair. I think that was a sign like he's clean. That was like how everyone knew the person was clean. And his beard. And his beard and his eyebrows. <laughs> oh, man. That poor guy. He's probably like really sad about that beard being shaved off. I don't know. He's probably more ecstatic about living and not dying, I would say. All right. Yeah, so anyway, it's it's your hair, it's your head, it's your eyebrows, uh, armpit hairs, probably not off your head. And his body. And his body? Where does it say his body? Mine says that. Uh, it says his body, so would that mean he shaves his legs? I have no idea. I would assume so, because if there's any infection, he has to shave everything. He'd shave from top to bottom, maybe. I don't know. Well, on 8 it says he shaves off all his hair, so that could be his whole body. Yeah, so he shaves off all his hair, but then on the seventh day, uh, so okay, so he shaves off all his hair right on his body, and then then on the seventh day he shaves all his hair off his head, and his beard, his eyebrows. All right, so probably not his armpits. His armpits would have been like the day before or something. Would be my guess. I don't know. All right, ten, and on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for an oblation mingled with oil and one log of oil. Anyone know what a log of oil? What did you guys say? One log, log of oil. oil. A log of oil. I wonder what that is. Hold on. There is a measurement for this. Oh, a log. It's actually telling you a measurement, huh? 
Oh, okay, Eli found it up here. It's about one third quart or about 0 0.3 liter. Um, all right, so. Yeah, point zero. Zero point three liter. Zero point three liters, or point six. So I call that a log pints. of oil. All right. And the priest that makes him cling shall present the man that is to be made cling, and those things before Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall take one he lamb and offer him for a trespass offering, and the log of oil and the wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. Now, why would this guy have to have a trespass offering? What is it? A guilt offering. Guilt offering. So. Why would he have a guilt offer? Um, well, like we have in the comments here, uh, our friend here uh, said where it was like a he like they spoke evil and they got these things. This could be why, because it was a guilt offering. He spoke evil and was cursed with this. What happens if we speak evil and we end up in leprosy here? Well, we better repent. Yeah, we shouldn't speak evil at all. That's kind of hard to do though among brothers, isn't it? Uh, it's not the easiest. Eli, how, how do how do we go a day without speaking evil? When was the last day you guys went through a day without <laughs> harassing each other? Well, Most say, of it's just in play. Most of it's not like in play. Ah, does everybody, have, is there, is everybody enjoy the play? No, it's not always jokes for everyone. It's a, so when was the last day you guys made it through a day without evil speak amongst the brothers? Oh, do you guys hear that? That's crickets. I'm thinking here. I don't think there <laughs> has been a day. Wow. They just took a bus ride. Yeah. Okay. So let's not get leprosy in this house, right? And this is why we what we speak is what comes into fruition, right? Evil is not presented until it comes out of our voice, right? And so this, this is for like everybody should know this, right? We thinking evil is one thing. Actually speaking it, it becomes live, right? What comes out of our mouth becomes regardless if it's good or if it's bad, it becomes real. I mean, people aren't, you know, going to school, public school, I will tell you, going from public school was probably the worst times of my life. As a little fat kid in a public school, if you are not dressed like the rest of the world, if you are fat or if you are anything like that, you get harassed, you get bullied, you get owned. Um, and, you know, my parents always dressed me in farm gear, right? I had work boots on and like work pants and so I got owned from the time I got to on the bus to the time I ran away from school I got owned and so when we have evil speak and you know this is something that even though we all kind of had crickets here and everybody kind of went under the bus this is something in our house that we are absolutely trying to do and learn how to do it properly and you know I am an only child so I do not understand quite about it and I'm probably an only child for a reason because I don't play too well with others, I don't think. So, here we go. Evil speak is no good. Let's just go with that. All right. 13. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and the ascending smoke offering in the, whole, in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Where have we seen this before? Uh, the well, priest anointing. Yeah, so this is very interesting, right? If Yah is cleansing somebody, right, they wash up, they shave up, and then they kill something. And then you have right ear, right thumb, and right big toe. All right. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil... And pour it into the palm of his own left hand. All right. And the priest shall dip his finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahuwah. Guys, seven times. This is why the lunar calendar does not work, right? If you are going outside of cycles of seven, then it should be obvious, even reading the Torah where we are at, you're going outside of cycles of seven, right? There is no great day or the new beginnings or something of the sort where you swap a year. Our creator is not a creator of confusion. He is a creator of sevens and fifties, sevens and fifties, sevens and fifties, right? All through this, it doesn't end. Right here, he puts oil in his hand, puts it in and sprinkles it seven times, right? So there we go. Don't mess around with the odds numbering. 17, and of the rest of the oil that it is in his right is in his hand, shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. So this is the tip. Okay, so before that, hold on. He put the blood. Where did he put the blood, right? Uh, 
tip of the right ear. Okay, so it goes on the tip of the right ear. So the blood and the oil goes on the tip of the right ear. Sorry. Um, guess how I was going with that, trying to figure out where the oil mm -hmm. went. Okay, so you put it up on the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. Okay, why the right hand, not the left? I don't know. Upon the blood of the trespass offering. Uh, I have no idea, but that's how Yah is sanctifying it. Uh, I guess you lefties are out of here, Cade. Whoops. Yeah, so um, I, I do I not still know. Have a left, I still have a right hand. I still have a right hand. But you use your left hand primarily. I know, but uh, to be sanctified, I just go tip my... Right what happens if the guy had no arm, or no hand? He lost. His I, he wouldn't be in the priest anyway. But I mean, if he's doing an offering, I what if he had it? He lost. He, he lost his right arm, and he was a leper, and then he got cleansed. So how would they do? Would they put it on sure, the, sure the they nub of left, his a left hand. I'm sure left hand, do. or would they put it on the nub of his his wrist or something wherever he had it? Probably his, his right hand, probably the right arm, maybe. What does this doing? What are we doing here? It's like re like reinstating you back into the camp. Yeah, but you're you're when you're done, you're gonna have blood, and now you're gonna have oil on your hair. You're gonna have blood and oil. You're gonna wash again. You're gonna wash, but I mean, is this really washing? I mean, are we are we like super cling and we don't understand that we are cling? I mean, life is in the blood, so we just you know these are I, I don't have the answers to this stuff, but I mean it's it's a, incredible that he is able to cleanse him, and the part of the sanctifying, the final piece of it is that you know there's blood on the the ear and the finger and the uh, the thumb and the toe. All right. Anyway, I don't have answers. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour on the head of him that is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before Yahuwah. Okay. So he just took a log of oil or what was left of the log of oil to put it on his head. And the priest shall offer the sin offering and make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. And afterward, he shall kill the ascending smoke fire. Smoke offering, excuse me. I'll kill the ascending smoke offering. All right. And the priest shall offer the ascending smoke offering and the oblation upon the altar. And the priest shall make atonement for him and he shall be clean. There's a lot of work to get clean, folks. And if he be poor and cannot get so much, then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering to be waived to make an atonement for him and one tenth of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation and a log of oil. All right. How is that? any different uh if he's poor i mean it seems like the same thing right did we do the same thing yeah i think one so. lamb for the trespass offering okay and this is the eighth day is we're going back to the eighth day again uh, oh he's got this is a sacrifice he's got to make his sacrifice when he comes back into the tent where he gives off the eel lamb where he gives all this stuff but if he's too poor he still brings a log of oil but instead he brings like the fine flour. how many lambs did he bring the first time three Oh, he brought three. He brought okay. two male lambs and then a, a one ewe lamb, a year old. Okay, so yeah, if you're broke, you just bring. You still got to get a lamb though, and I mean, if you're real broke, I don't know how you do that. You got to go I'm borrow sure it. Maybe someone has one male lamb. You got a neighbor or a friend? I'm sure they'll help you out somehow. You think? Give you an unblemished, perfect lamb? I mean, I think Yashua would help. I think, you I'm sure out. they have like trade deals, like uh, either there's there's like a payment for it, or there was like uh, I'll work for the lamb or something. I don't know. Hmm, maybe it's a good idea. Good thoughts. All right. Do you like anything? Nope. Nothing at all? Nope. You're going to sit in silence? Do you want some more bad fruit? Nope. All right. Let's go. And two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, such as he is able to get, and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other an ascending smoke offering. And he shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest, unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah. And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. So I think we're talking about three different kinds of the same kinds of the burnt offerings, right? Anyone with me? Anyone following along? It's with the you? same yeah. thing, but it's like for well, this one's a wave. This one's a trespass offering. All right, we have we have a grain offering, a burnt offering, and a guilt offering. So there's, and a smoke and a burnt offering. So there's four different things. Yeah, I think the burnt grain, guilt, and wave. Yeah, so there's four here. Right, so it takes a lot to get right with Yah. Thank, thank Yah for Yahushua, right? <laughs> My goodness. Okay, and he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And he says lobe of the ear. Of the right ear. Lobe of the right ear. Okay, so that's why I was wondering, because the, one, the oil they said put at the top of the ear, I think is what it said. You want with me? You yeah, it's like the tip of the ear or something. Oh, boy, the tip of the ear could be either top or bottom. 
What do you mean the tip? The top? I mean, you can have a tip. Uh, you can, I guess the bottom tip. Top tip. Top. I don't know. I don't know. Well, this guy has like all sorts of blood on his ear and oil and stuff at this moment. He's going to need a bath again. <laughs> you will. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle his finger some of the oil. You guys want to guess how many times? Seven. Yeah. Hmm. Well, with his finger, some of the oil that is in the left hand, seven times before Yahuwah. So when we start our new year in the middle of the week or in the middle of a month or in the middle of something that's not, we're outside of the cycles of seven. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before Yahuwah. And he shall offer the one, and he shall offer the one of the turtle doves or the young, of the young pigeons, such as he can get. Do we even talk about this yet? Why? Why do we? Where do we get birds on it? We're in the beginning to talk about this. Yeah, turtle the, doves. In the beginning, right here it says. Hold on, let me see. Turtle. Yeah, right here at. Uh, let's see. Yeah, right here, verse four says, "Take two live and clean birds." That's the oh, kill. that's that, that's the very first one. So I think this is something different. So now, if you're like so, like if you can afford, if, only if you can afford these. It didn't say that though. Mine says if if he's able to afford. On thirty. 30, yes, says, and he shall prepare one of the turtle doves or young pigeons such as he is able to afford. That's 31. No, that's 30. 31, that says that which he's able to afford. Yeah. Well, and it says the end of 30 as well. Okay, that doesn't say that anymore on this. Okay, so let's read on 30. And he shall offer one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons such as he can get, e even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering and the other for an ascending smoke offering with the oblation, and the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before Yahuwah. This is the Torah of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertains to his cleansing. Okay, so he's broke. All right. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aron, saying, When ye are come into the land of Canaan, which I give you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seems to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go into it and see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean. And afterward, the priest shall go to see the house and he shall look on the plague and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow strikes, greenish or wet, reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall. Okay. So what do you mean? Hey, sunken places. Sunken places. Wow. So, so maybe, they, they, were they using wood for their houses? They must be or something, because I don't know how you get sunken things inside of a brick house. Yeah, bricks wouldn't do or that. Or even a clay house. How Maybe clay, like the holes in the wall? I don't know. It could be a clay house, maybe. It could be. Maybe Probably. Could. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, so if it owns the house, it literally would destroy the house. I don't think this would, I don't think leprosy would destroy a, a, a brick house. So, I don't know. But... Stick. Pressure washed off the wall. <laughs> yeah, but then the water's all contaminated, all that stuff. I mean, it's going to be there somewhere. All right, 38. Then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. We're back. We're back, seven. All right, and the priest shall come again the seventh day. What if this day ended up on Shabbat? What would they do? It's going to be that? the same thing. Are they still going like to go out and look at it? Yeah, it's probably like circumcision. The priest's job is never done. The priest, as much as everybody gets to rest all the day, the priests don't get that rest. I wonder what day they rest. They probably took shifts. Like, you get this Shabbat, you'll get this day, I'll work this day. But there's a lot of stuff to do. I mean, there's a ton of people. The there was people... a lot of Levites, so we'll get the head count soon enough. There's yeah. a lot of people. So. All right. And the priest shall come again the seventh day, and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house... Then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. So I don't know. It says stones. How does how do how do you how is it just like? Oh, did they build a rocks and put like a clay plaster over it? Is that what they did? And maybe like they ripped the rocks out of the wall. Uh, I don't is know. That possible? I don't know. Maybe they uh, maybe they're repaired. So it's obviously not a tent at this point. They're no longer in tents. They're obviously in a solid foundation where they're like ripping this the wall. This one is out. yeah. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. Get the stones. They take away the stones. Um, without the city. And they shall cast him into an unclean place without the city. Take it outside the city gates. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without 
the city into an unclean place. So there you go. That's the answer right there, right? So they scraped it off. So they got it down. You, but you take... That's very interesting. So they uh, they should cast them out. Weigh the stones in which the plague is. Okay, so basically, if you you might just end up with giant holes in your house. Is what I'm thinking. Like they just, whatever it is, break the stone out of the wall. Nicole, you got something? No, you're fine. Okay. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within about, I think I read that one. You're on the horror too. 42. And they shall take the other stones and put them in the place of those stones. And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster okay. plaster the house. So Again, just, okay. Yeah, so it is clay. Some sort of clay or some, they figure out how some sort of cement or something. All right. Stones on the wall. That could be dangerous though because if the stones aren't built up for that, the entire wall could come down. Yeah, you'd hope that you know how to build a house right. All right. And if the plague come again and break out in the house after he has taken away the stones and after he has scraped the house and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look. And behold, if the plague has be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. The whole house is toast. And he shall break down the house, the stones of it and the timber thereof and all the mortar of the house. And he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Okay, why why this guy's house just got destroyed? I mean, is there is that the is that I'm not gonna say that's not the best way to do it, because Yah always has the best way to do it. But why would they do it? Why would they knock the entire house down? First you're supposed to scrape it, get the dust. Uh, that didn't work. Why would why are you destroying this entire house? Uh, it's contaminated, you don't want because it would probably contaminate other houses. The air inside of it, there's a lot And of if you destroy it, the plague is still gonna be on it and you still have to carry that stuff out of there, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure they Priest has some sanitary, like, hazmat gear or something or some way to... <laughs> Priest mat gear. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have answers to that, but I, his house is gone. All right. Moreover, he that goes into the house all the while that is shut up shall be unclean until the even. And he that lies in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eats in the house shall wash his clothes. And the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. And he shall take to cleanse the house two birds, and a cedar wood, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And he shall kill the one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the running water and with the living bird and with the cedar wood and with the hyssop and with the scarlet. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open fields and make an atonement for the house and it shall be clean. This is the Torah for all manner of plague of leprosy and skull. What did you guys say? Leprosy and you guys with me? Um, yeah, leprosy. And for any skin defiling or defiling skin disease for a sore. All right, skull. All right, and for the leprosy of a garment, and of a house, and for ri a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, when it is clean. This is the Torah of leprosy. All right. Well, that is uh, that is it. That uh, concludes this segment, gentlemen. Any th thoughts? Anything we have? Um, I guess if you get leprosy or some disease, try repenting and hopefully it gets it away. Or hopefully Yahoo heals you of whatever yeah, sin you committed. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it sounds fatal. It sounds like it spreads. It sounds like, like you have to completely be away from like everybody this else. Plague in the house? Would this one kill you? Would this one be like almost death? like almost like it's like a, a mold or like a mold that regrows? Uh, I don't know. Uh, somebody was. Uh, I think one of our. Uh, one of our family members out there, one of their sons was investigating this. I don't know what he came up with. I mean, I, I suppose we should investigate it um, at some point. But um, for right now, I don't have anything else. Um, anything, Eli? Um, no commands here, You're I guess. You're speaking too much, for, son. <laughs> Get no up to the commands. mic and speak less. No commands for us right here other than if you end up with some crazy uh, disease in your house. Repent and, like, clean that stuff up. We're clean that Clorox. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, so that's that's the only time you probably bleach. ever want. Yeah, bleach. That's probably the only time you'd ever want to use that kind of evil stuff because I, I, it's it's pretty deadly. It's but a, I think it would kill leprosy or whatever's in your house or something of the sort. But yeah, I, mean, I mean, at this point, I mean, you probably need spiritual protection. And if it is a spiritual plague of that sort, um, 
I would hope and pray that our evil speak here in the house, we don't end up developing leprosy. And if we do, we kind of identified why we would end up with leprosy today, right? Right. Right. So we probably shouldn't, we should probably remember that our Messiah is sitting right next to us at all times. And there's definitely messengers that are reporting good and bad. And you guys remember what the Bible says about evil speak, right? It's all going to be played back to us at the end of time. We will be judged for every idle word we say. Every idle word we say. And the crazy thing is you guys all know this, but yet... We still speak evil. Do you guys just get bored out there? Is that it? And so it's um, better to start picking on each other? That might be part of it. Like you just like have a little entertainment. Just... Entertainment. Is that entertainment? Is it entertainment to the guy getting picked on? Uh, probably not. No, but it's entertaining to everybody around you who's picking on him, huh? Huh. Interesting. All right, guys. Well, um, we're always throwing our sins out in, in the forest to everybody. It's, uh, we have a long ways to go in everything that we do, and all we can do is try to get better, and every single day is a new beginning. Um, and we need to keep with our Creator. Our Creator has, has built an entirely beautiful system and a beautiful word. His Torah is love. It is, is patience. It is kindness. It is, it is everything. It is the best guide to any life ever. And if you want to be real men and real women of Yah, then we absolutely need to write these commandments on our heart, mind, and soul. If we don't, then we're going to be walking in darkness, and we won't know when we're sinning. We're going to become unclean. We don't know when we're unclean, and we're not going to be presentable to Yah when we need to have clean hands, clean hearts, clean minds, and clean souls. Mostly clean tongues, right? Because out of what? Out of the heart. Yeah, comes. Wickedness. Yeah, and every evil thing the man can have. He's he, the wicked. The heart is the, the wickedest thing we have, and... That's what Christians say all the time. Oh, he knows my heart. I can eat the pork. He knows my heart. Oh, I go to Sunday. I go to Sunday church and I get down in the prayers and, and God knows my heart. And unfortunately, that is very true. And the heart of man is very tough. wicked. Who can understand it? Yeah, who can understand it? All right, everyone. Anyone else have anything? Uh, if you guys get a chance to study your, the Torah or the Bible at any time, you should take that chance to study it. Yeah, don't and pass that opportunity up. Absolutely. And everybody that comments on the stuff, we love you guys. We really, really appreciate the comments and. Um, that you're hanging out with us and hanging out with Yah. And um, yeah, may you guys have a very blessed day. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.